Okay, so we're actually looking at the trachea, which you have met before when we talked about pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelial tissue. That's what you can see to the left. The pointer right now is in hyaline cartilage that we are going to zoom in on so that you can see. Because cartilage is really distinct. See, these chondrocytes are entrapped in these lacuna here. These little open spaces surrounding these cells are lacuna. And that purple spot right there in the middle is its nucle the nucleus of the chondrocyte. So I believe the professor said something like um, hyaline cartilage is pretty amorphous in that its ground substance whoa, has all of the fibers, but you can't really like see anything distinct about them. That's what you can see here. So this is as close as we can get in. And it's going to work, I promise. Come on. Dang it. Right when it was about to work, the cameraman moved. The cameraman may or may not be an underpaid lab assistant. Hang on a minute. Okay, right at the tip of the pointer is the nucleus of a chondrocyte entrapped in the lacuna. And so how you can tell this is hyaline cartilage is because there's nothing super distinct other than that. So I, each of our cartilage types is going to have that feature in common, the chondrocyte entrapped in a lacuna but the other two cartilage types are going to have really distinct protein fiber patterns that you can't see here. I think elastic cartilage is my favorite. So see here how you can see those big wide open spaces? Those are lacuna with chondrocytes in them and the pointer is right on these really darkly staining elastic fibers in elastic cartilage. Okay, so the pointer right now is on a pink nucleus of a chondrocyte entrapped in a lacuna. And now this is fibrocartilage, so these blue, or this blue, like yeah, the, the collagen fibers are picking up this blue dye, and so these blue staining fibers are the collagen fibers that are tightly packed, kind of in a similar fashion to how they were packed together in dense regular connective tissue. So fibrocartilage has great, um, or can resist great amounts of compressive pressures. All right, this is compact bone. Compact bone is actually one of my favorite tissues to look at because it looks like it, almost exactly what you would expect it to look like based on the pictures in your book. Some other tissues don't. Sometimes your teacher's like, look, it's stringy and globby. You're like, what the heck are you talking about, lady? But compact bone really looks like you think it should. So we can see these dark spots here are the central canals. And surrounding the central canals, we have lamella which are those rings that surround the central canals and it's where we've got those collagen fibers that are going and oh come on different directions pause okay I think it's just too hard to see through the camera at the higher magnification so right at the tip of the pointer is a little dark spot that is an osteocyte and trapped in a lacuna and yeah we need to go I need to go closer. Well, maybe I can make this move. You can see that we've got these rings of bone around those central canals. And so each of these things is an osteon. So if you were to walk up to the lab practical station on your computer screen in your living room and it was pointed at something like, this is really hard to do people, this, and said, what's the structure? You would say, oh, that's an osteon. If it was pointed right dead center and it said, what's this? You'd say, oh, that's a central canal. And I could say, what does it contain? And you would say, branches of the arteries and nerves and veins that serve the bone, lymphatics. Okay, if I had it instead in like one of these tiny little dots and said, what's that? That is a lacuna. What does it contain? An osteocyte. And the osteocytes are branching out and touching each other through these little things called canaliculi. And those are the reason that we need to try and see if we can zoom in here. Because I'd like you to see canaliculi. Okay, there's our pointer. There are these little tiny, oh, it's so hard to focus. These little tiny, you can kind of see them up above there. These little tiny lines, see up there? 
those are little channels that are connecting these black dots to each other. Those black dots are the osteocytes who've totally encased themselves in a lacuna, which is the, like, you know, little space in this solid bone tissue. But they have to be able to get blood from there. That's the central canal. All the way out to these osteocytes in the outer layers, and they can do that by connecting through these little tiny channels called canaliculi. So those are what those are. I don't know if you need to be, this is also called the Haversian system. So a Haversian system is an osteon. And a Haversian, you'll see like Haversian canal, that's your central canal. And then we've got these Volkmann's canals, which are perforating canals, which are how we go from one osteon to the next. So we can't see that here. We're only seeing how the cells within one osteon are connecting. So let me get the longitudinal section. Once before you might have heard me say they should fire the person who picks out <clears throat> these crappy slides because this is not a good longitudinal section. We can see the central canals here, but I can't see the perforating canals. So this section literally I don't think has a single perforating canal in it, which is the whole reason you're supposed to be looking at a longitudinal section. So F to you, professor. All right, that's it for your bone lab. See you for muscles.